8.3 is just around the corner and you got to know what to expect, am I right? Blood Decay has been in the spotlight in the last few months for different reasons and today we will look over what 8.3 brings to Blood Decay, what you could expect and so on. We work together with Mandel and Faradin, two of the top Blood Death Knights theory crafters who graciously helped us with every last bit of information you will see here. Traits, essences, corruption affixes, weapons and a lot more, so stay tuned. A short disclaimer before we dive right in, and I cannot underline this strongly enough. This is theory crafting, analysis and a bit of speculating. Blizzard has been buffing and nerfing 8.3 weapons, essences, traits like mad every week, so take every number here with a grain of salt. However, if you will keep in mind everything we will discuss today, you will have an easier time deciding what will actually be good for you, even if it's changed, since one of the goals of the video is to give you perspective on the spec. There has also been a lot of back and forth in the Blood Decay community about how good the spec is. Some people calling it the de facto choice for top mythic raiders, some people strongly disagreeing. The truth is probably somewhere in the middle when it comes to performance and a strong note on performance. And it will be based on how Blizzard keeps on balancing 8.3 in the following weeks or months even since certain things outperform others by a large margin. But this is not a video about how good Blood Decay is compared to other tanks, so let's get back on track. As far as changes go, going into the new season, there are very minimal changes to the specs build. So let's check the talents, which didn't really change. They will most likely remain the same, with maybe the first and last rows changing based on situational encounters as before. In raid, you want Blood Drinker that can be swapped to Heartbreaker for dungeons. Hemostasis will remain the default on the second row, with Ossuary being the default on the third. Will of the Necropolis still looks like the strongest one here since Rune Tap is situational and there are no current situations where Rune Tap will outperform Will of the Necropolis. The 75 row is utility based. Wraith Walk will be your raid choice and Grip of the Dead your mythic plus choice. Bloodworms on the level 90 row, Bone Storm most likely the default for mythic plus with raids favoring purgatory especially as we dive into the content for the first time. The current essences and traits remain mostly unchanged in terms of power they provide. Overwhelming power is a known nerf which will affect blood since we want haste but not by a very large margin, most likely becoming more competitive with other options on the row, so not getting overwhelming power on your Azurai piece shouldn't feel too bad. The new raid trait Heart of Darkness currently is average. It gives secondary stats and Blood loves all secondary stats. And since it's on both pieces from the last two bosses that drop it with an increased 10 eye level, it will probably be a default choice. You do need a minimum of 25 corruption to activate it, which is something everyone will eventually have, but something to keep in mind at first, I suppose. The new essences in 8.3 come with a 10 corruption resistance passive which although it's good, it might not be worth to slot a miner if the essence itself is not good, since you can stack different items with different levels of corruption and whichever you get is a bit RNG-ish, it's tough to tell when the resistance will be good for you, but if the 10 resistance makes a difference in your survivability, that's when you should consider it, provided the essence it pertains to is also effective. With that in mind, Strength of the Warden is the first essence we will get and it drops from the horrific visions from the last boss at rank 1 and upgradable through currency looted from horrific visions chests. The essence stunts everything around you for 6 seconds, gives you a 15% dodge chance and increases the damage you deal to taunted targets by 50% at rank 3. This seems a bit underwhelming for raids as a major but could work more in Mythic Plus. The effect is very situational and you will need to take it into consideration. It might help you with large pulls and keeping aggro on skittish or whenever this will be a problem. The 50% extra damage can be very good if lined up with stuff like Bone Storm and such. Again, numbers are numbers so testing is needed but hey, that's the fun part, right? Right? Just me? 
The Miner of the Trade provides a burst of healing once you dodge or parry an attack. The healing is nice, but the fact that it triggers on situations where you don't take damage seems a bit counterintuitive, at least for raids. In Mythic Plus, you are pretty much always taking damage and rarely at full HP, so it will probably see more use there. It also has a 3% extra HP boost for you and all tanks in your group and you can stack it, meaning its effect will probably be noticed in raids. The boost is nice, but should rarely be a reason for you to pick it. Formless Void is the famed Essence Copier, meaning you can copy an Essence from one of your group members and use it, incurring a larger cooldown than normal based on your rank. The Major is very situational and doesn't seem to have a niche at the moment. The Miner, however, gives you a Strength and Haste buff for 20 seconds each time someone in your group uses an essence, refreshing the duration each time. This is relying entirely on the concept of people not popping their essences at the same time so you can have a higher uptime on it. Seems this could be good and maybe the default corruption resistance choice minor in raids, but in dungeons people usually blast their essences all at once on dangerous packs, maybe not as much in pugs though. As long as you can understand the limitations of this and know you can use it, you can make an informed decision if it's something you should aim for. It drops from the raid, so if you are raiding you'll probably have it regardless. Touch of the Everlasting is a reward from a quest chain started in Veil of Eternal Blossoms and the major gives you a cheat death mechanic with a few added bonuses. Mostly the cheat death mechanic is the reason you would take it since every other bonus relies on you actually taking the fatal damage. It won't see use in raids much since you already should have purgatory there, but could see uses in mythic plus. The miner however seems to be really underwhelming, close to the worst miner in the game at the moment for blood decay. This will most likely not be a goal for you unless Blizzard buffs the shit out of it or for some reason you really want the cheat death due to the content and strats your group will be eventually pulling off. We will check corruption next, but before we do that, hey, how about you check our new channel when this video is over. We do talks about life experiences and improvements, you'll get to see Marcelino line behind the scenes, a more humane aspect with general positive vibes. Don't worry though, it will not take anything away from our WOW channel, but if you like what you see there, consider leaving a like and a subscribe since it really helps out on small channels. Thank you very much. The new kid on the block in 8.3 will be the corruption system. The famed kiss curse mechanic which certain players aptly name it kiss my butt curse mechanic. And by certain players I mean Marcellian and by Marcellian I mean me just to try to make the script funnier. Did it work? Leave a comment yo. Tanks will be a bit differently affected by the corruption since the void zones and similar effects that force you to move can be very detrimental for your group, especially in raids where if you move the boss, everyone will have to move and some people might already have to move for their own reasons. For that, ideally you want to be below 20 corruption generally. As of the recording of this video, Echoing Void, one of the corruption affixes, is incredibly overpowered ahead of everything else by a large margin. Same as the overpowered weapon we had over a month ago, this will most likely be nerfed almost 100% sure and depending on the strength of the nerf, it could end up in the same situation as the overpowered weapon in question, which is Skjulvaz. Initially it used to explode for 1000% of your armor in AoE that was nerfed to 300% and now again to 175% bumping it into a why bother category meaning that Getiku sword from King's Rest will still be the best weapon for you, at least for raiding. The proper numbers in AoE could still be vastly different so live testing is needed to understand how good or how bad this will be in Mythic Plus. The other raid weapon with the corruption is Twilight Devastation. The effect itself is nice, has good damage, however the corruption cost is massively overpriced to the damage it offers when compared with other effects like Infinite Stars which has been changed a whole bunch of times and its rank 1 still does more damage than Twilight at rank 3 at a cost of 20 corruption currently opposed to the 75 of Twilight. 
To be fair, for the past week or so, we have been in constant contact with Mandel and Faradin, and as we were compiling all the information, at least a few changes were already made, and another one during the writing of the script. This is an example on how much Blizzard is balancing the numbers, taking us back to our original argument of offering you a perspective and context based on which to make decisions and judge things. Lastly, the corruption effects pertaining to stats has also been changed a bit, where now these effects are additive, meaning no diminishing returns when stacking them. The change is positive, but not tremendously different. Since Blood likes all stats almost evenly, you'll have a lot more options to play with these as opposed to other tanks and specs in general that will favor something more specific. To finish the corruption talk as of the current PTR build, any corruption effect that has tier scaling, its benefits and corruption cost can apply to any item until further notice, meaning you could have a raid weapon effect applied to a pair of gloves. This seems very RNG and I wouldn't be surprised if it's addressed at a certain point so we can actually aim for certain effects and items. This video was made a bit differently than our other ones, where we normally do our own research and just fact check it. This time we relied 100% on the work of Mandel, Faradin and the Acris Discord community of Blood Death Knights. We are very, very grateful for their willingness and effort put into this, so we would really like you guys to check them out. You'll find a lot of other Blood Death Knight things they made. Things such as articles and guides explaining more advanced stuff than what we usually cover. I did say this before, but after talking with a lot of people, it feels like something we need to heavily underline again. The video was to give you guys a sense of direction, put a spotlight on the spec so you can approach 8.3 with some sense as to what you should aim for. Blizzard is changing numbers like mad, so not everything you will see here will stay the same even after the raid has been opened. Keep your eyes on ours and the accuracy discord channels for any and all potential updates thank you in no small part to our patrons who make all of this possible and are supporting us through a difficult time of year for youtube we love you guys and we'll work our butts off to give you our best and if you want more details on how to support us a bit more check the links down below thanks for watching the video and see you in the next one